Hey gang, so I'm out here once again, as you see, on my deck, and I'm gonna be doing another one of these debriefs from uh, my Alaska trip, and that's because I keep getting some really good questions being asked. So I think it's easiest to answer them in the form of a video, especially this topic, as I've been getting a lot of this question over and over again. And that is, what do I do to keep my bike secure? And we'll talk a little bit about keeping myself secure as well while I'm out there traveling. So let's begin by saying that like motorcycling, right, I am not going to be able to eliminate all of my risk while I'm out there traveling. Right? No matter how good of a motorcyclist I am, right, there's always going to be a little bit of risk that's involved with our sport. All right, well, the same is going to be true while I'm out there traveling and keeping the bike safe and keeping me safe. I can do things that are common sense, essentially, right, to achieve those things, but still there's always going to be some degree of risk. So we need to understand that when we head out there on the road. Now, I think that it eventually gets down to we have to have some kind of trust in human nature. And I'm sure that there are going to be those of you who <laughs> will trust nobody, right? But I have found that while I'm traveling, most people are really nice and really helpful. In fact, I don't think I've ever ran into anybody who is just a complete jerk, right? Pretty much everybody is nice, if you're nice to them anyway. So for me, again, there has to be a little bit of a trust thing that goes on while you're out there on the road. So first, let's talk about locks and chains, because I've had people tell me over the years that they bring, you know, 20 feet of chain, you know, really thick chain to lock their bikes up to a pole or something so nobody can take them. I don't do that. I have never done that. Um, there have been occasions when I was out with some other guys and we were on our smaller bikes. We did carry a braided cable and a lock where we could lock all of the bikes together. So it made it a little bit harder to take them, right? But still, we know that people with the right tools can do it anyway. But that was because we had very small, easy to move motorcycles. On something like my Triumph Tiger 1200, well, it's a pretty big motorcycle and you're not going to move it easily. Right? For example, what I do instead of using locks and chains and things is I lock the steering, right? It has electronic steering lock on it, so I'll set that every night. And also, they're not gonna get that bike started unless they have the fob, and the fob gets turned off every night while I'm up in the hotel room. So about the only way that they're going to be able to move that bike is if they can lift the front end up off of the ground and move it on the rear wheel. Right? And if somebody's able to do that, well, you know, I don't want to mess with that person, right? Or they're going to be a crew of people to do that. So those are not things that I'm going to be able to stop, probably. All right, so just being reasonable, right? just locking your steering head, right? And then the second thing I do is I cover the bike every night, right? And my reason for doing that is because I figure out of sight, out of mind, right? If they can't see what kind of bike it is, if they have to go that extra step to either slice the cover or take it off in order to get to things, well, most people aren't gonna do that. Again, unless they're a professional kind of thief, right? This is what they do on an everyday basis. Right? And again, we're not going to stop those kinds of people. What we want to do is stop the folks that might just be walking through the parking lot and seeing an easy mark. Right? So keeping your bike covered is going to eliminate, well, almost all of that. Now people ask what kind of cover that I use and how small does it pack? So. There's the pack size on this. Uh, this is a Nelson Rig Defender. Right? So it's not the 100% waterproof version. It's water resistant, but your bike might get a little bit damp uh, at night um, you know, with this cover. But again, for me, that's okay because it packs a little bit smaller. 
Now the size that I use is an XXL right, because I have those panniers on the back and they're about 40 inches wide so you need that extra room right in the back of, uh, of the cover so that you can accommodate that on a big adventure bike. Right. I used to use it on my BMW uh, K1600 as well. It fit that very easily. So for other bikes, measure them and then go to the Nelson Rig website and see which one looks like it's going to fit your bike the best. Now they do have another cover that's called the uh, Defender Extreme that is 100% waterproof. And it's a little bit larger. It packs right, a little bit larger. Uh, but they do have an adventure version. So again, go check all those out. So now, where do I keep this? All right, well, I keep it typically in two different places. On this trip, I had a bag that permanently set up on my rear saddle. And in that bag, I had my cover. All right, I had some tie-down straps that I used while I was on the ferry. And then I had some extra cleaning supplies. Right, that I honestly did not use on the trip. But all of that stuff was in that bag and it stayed on the back seat, like I said, permanently on the course of the trip. Uh, and honestly though, if somebody had come up and taken that off, you know, cut the straps, well, I wouldn't have cared. I mean, yeah, it would have been bad to lose a cover, but this is like 60 bucks, so it's not a big deal. Right, and I could have lived without having the cover. So that brings us to Another point is keeping things on your motorcycle, right? When you're parked at night and you are going into a hotel or even in a campground, um, you know, don't leave a lot of bags and things, you know, on your bike, right? If they're soft luggage, well, they're really easy to cut into. They're really easy to cut those straps and, and take them away. In fact, I've know people that that has happened to. So here's a story to illustrate that. I know some folks who were staying at a hotel that I've stayed at many times and never had any problem there. Uh, but these folks, they were, had trailered their bikes up to the starting point of uh, the Northeast BDR, right? And one guy had a trailer and he didn't want to get a hotel room because so he was going to stay in his enclosed trailer out in the parking lot. So his bike was out in the parking lot next to the trailer. And he had all of his gear, his camping gear and everything was attached to the bike, so he's ready to leave in the morning. Now he thought, well, I'm gonna be staying in the trailer right next to it, it'll be nice and safe. Right, I'll hear them and I'll come running out and stop them if they're gonna mess with my bike. Well, turned out not to be the case. When he got up in the morning, they had cut the straps and all of his luggage, his camping gear and everything was gone. All right, so lesson learned there. Right? Never leave your bike sitting in the parking lot, no matter how secure you think it is, right, with your luggage and things on it, at least your soft luggage. Like I have those big locking bags on there and I don't take them in every night. I leave them on the bike, but they have to, you know, be dedicated thieves if they want to get into those, right? They're going to have to drill those locks out or have some very elaborate picking tools to get into those locks, right? So those things, and also because they are covered at night, right? I have never had anybody try to get into those, right? Or been able to get into those either. All right, so I, as I said, I did leave that one bag under the cover again, at night, nobody could see that it was there. And again, there was nothing in there that I really could live without. All of my important stuff, my clothing, my personal care items, my medications, my documentation, my electronic stuff, all of that was in the lockable storage bags. And most of that got hauled in with me every night. Right. The way that I do it is I have bags that I can pull out really easily and then just take stuff up to the room. It just takes a few minutes, right? It's not a big deal. Now I do leave my GPS on the bike typically, but that's because I have a little device that locks that on. Nobody can just walk up there and take that off, right? They have to have a special tool to do it. 
Now, could they break my windscreen and snap the mechanism that allows you to adjust it in order to get that off? Well, they could, right? but that would be a lot of work. And also, it's undercover, and again, nobody knows it's there unless they go looking for it. So next, where you park your bike is very important. If you're at a hotel and you park your bike around the back of the building, where there are no lights or where nobody can see anybody who might be walking by, well, that's kind of asking for trouble. So I typically try to park my bike in the front of the building as close to the entrance of the hotel as possible because that's where all the lights are, that's where a lot of people are walking in and out, right? You're not very likely to have thieves, you know, around in that area. They're going to be back in the darker areas. Now at a lot of hotels, if you ask them if it's okay, they will often let you park underneath that big awning that's in front of, uh, of the building. Right? I was able to do that many times on this trip. Some of them didn't like it. Some of them it's just too narrow and you're risking getting your bike hit. So still, I would park as close to that entrance as I possibly could. And again, I think that helps to again, keep the bike safe as well. Now, a lot of people want to be able to see their motorcycles when they're up in their room. But just because you can see the bike, if you are you know, down a long hallway, like on this trip, we were staying, uh, I said me, we, we, me and several other bikers who were staying there at this little motel uh, in Pink Mountain, BC. And you could either park your bike in front of this hotel where there was a restaurant and a bar. People were constantly going in and out. Right? Or you can park it around the side of the building, again, where there were no lights. Nobody is going to be walking around there. You could still see your bike, though, out the window of your room. Well, what good does that do? If I'm down a long hallway, and even if I hear somebody outside at night, then what am I gonna do? Go look at them in the window, run all the way in my underwear, all the way around, out the front of the building, around the side of the building to stop them from taking something. All right, well, that's not very likely to happen. So I think that you're better off parking in those more well-lit areas, even if it means that you cannot see your bike directly. Now, I know a lot of people like to go to those motels where you can park your bike right in front of your room. And I like that too, right? That's very convenient for packing and unpacking. But honestly, the truth is that it really doesn't make your bike any safer. Right? Because I'm going to be in that room. It's going to be 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be dead asleep. I'm not going to hear anybody messing around with my bike. Right? So, you know, I personally don't think it really makes your bike any safer. Again, what does make it safer is, is it well lit out there? right is there foot traffic is it is the hotel in a good area right that makes the most difference now i've heard of people who roll their bikes into the room if you can right? and again i don't do that either i think if you feel that you have to roll your bike into the room for it to be safe well, you might not want to be staying at that motel All right. one last thing about staying at hotels at least for me is the hotels that I choose, right? I tend to choose more upscale hotels, I guess some people may say. Uh, typically, they're going to be in that $100, $150 price range, sometimes more, depending upon the city. But I tend to pick those more expensive locations. Um, and that is because if I go over to the wrong side of the tracks to get that cheap motel, well, then I'm more likely to have, you know, cheaper people that are walking around there looking for things to steal. Uh, if I am with people who are willing to pay that higher price, well, then most of the time, you know, my stuff is going to be safer, right? Or my bike is going to be safer. Again, not all of the time, not 100%. I know somebody who got some stuff stolen at a upscale chain hotel. But again, he left his soft bags on the bike and they sliced them and took them away. So, yeah, I think that is more important, right, than, again, the hotel choices in that case. But 
again, having a hotel that has lights, that has security, that has cameras, all right, well, that's gonna help keep your bike safe versus some place that doesn't. Next, what do I do when I'm stopping along the road? I'm stopping for a coffee, stopping to go in a restaurant and so forth. And the truth is that it just depends. It depends upon where I am. I look at the area and I say, okay, does this look like a place that, you know, I can reasonably trust, right? Or does this look like a place that I need to be more leery about, right? Well, if it's a place that I need to be more leery about, like, for example, Walmarts, I never leave my helmet or my jacket on the bike in Walmart. I always take it with me, right? Uh, at truck stops, I do the same thing. At rest areas, again, I do the same thing. All right, so it really depends, right, upon where I am. If I'm in a town and I'm at a nice little restaurant, well, I can be reasonably sure that I can leave my helmet out on the bike and nobody's gonna mess with it, especially if I can see the motorcycle, you know, from inside the, the restaurant. And that was the case. A lot of the times on this trip, I left my helmet sitting on uh, the motorcycle, took my jacket in typically because I'm wearing it. I can just hang it on the back of the chair. I, and again, nobody ever messed with my helmet. In fact, all of the years that I've been doing this, nobody has ever messed with my helmet, the bike, or my gear. Now, one thing I do take off the bike every time that I stop and go inside is my camera equipment. Right, that's just too easy to grab and, and take off with, right? And it's expensive. So I always go through that pain in the butt process of taking the cameras off, putting them in the side cases and locking them all up, right? Because like I said, it's expensive, right? And I wouldn't have any way to document my trips if they you know, took those cameras. So that's the one thing I am uh, very, very careful with. Now, of course, if you do have soft luggage, like that little bag on the back of my seat, or if you're carrying camping gear in soft luggage, well, this is where you have to kind of trust a little bit in human nature. You have to, again, park your bike as close as you can to the restaurant, make sure that you can see it, uh, but you can't carry all that stuff in with you, right? And so, again, there's a little bit of trust that you have to have. To have. Now let's talk about personal safety. Right, and to me, again, this is just mostly common sense. I, I use the same common sense while I'm here at home as I do out on the road. So that is, I don't go in places that I am not comfortable with. Right, I don't go to dive bars. I don't get drunk. I don't uh, get stoned. I don't walk around unfamiliar places at night. Again, these are all things that I would do back here at home, and I continue to do them on the road. Now, of course, that's just me. You've got to do what you enjoy, right? Have a good time on your trip, but there's a give and take here, right? If you're going to go out at night and do those kinds of things, well, then your risk level is going to go up. So lastly, let's cover a topic that comes up every time that I have talked about security and so forth, and that is carrying a firearm while you're traveling. And if you are legally licensed to do so in whatever jurisdiction that you are traveling in, then it is, of course, your right to do so. I will say, though, at least for me, I have to understand when I'm doing that, that it comes with a lot of extra responsibility. So I have to ask myself, do I really want to carry that extra responsibility around with me on the trip. Now, I am a gun owner. Right? I am licensed to carry here in the state of Massachusetts. I am also licensed out of state in Utah, which allows me to carry my firearm in about 30 states legally. However, as I said, I do take very seriously that responsibility, and I think about the ramifications right, if I have to use that firearm. Right? And of course, it's one thing that if my life is truly in danger, which by the way, it never has been in the entire time that I've been traveling, but if I pull the gun right to protect my personal property, my motorcycle, etc., then, well, I'm more likely to go to jail than the potential thief, right? And if shots are fired, well, that's a whole different ballgame. So 
So in my 18 years of traveling around the United States and Canada, I have never been in the situation where I felt my life was in danger or that I was even in danger of being robbed. Of course, could it happen? Yes, absolutely, it could. But it's very rare, right? So again, for me, again, anyway, again, I have to think about all of these things before I decide to take my gun along with me on a trip. Now, going into Canada like I did on this trip, well, I can't do that legally, right? So I left my firearms at home, and when I was crossing the border going into Canada, when they asked me if I had any weapons, well, I could say no, and that was the honest truth. So I'm a law-abiding citizen, a law-abiding gun owner, and I'm not going to break the law, right, just because I think it's my right to have a gun, right? Canada says no, it's their right to have that law, I'm gonna abide by it. All right, guys, I think that's about it. We've covered this topic pretty well. As I said, most of this stuff is just using some common sense. All right, so do you have any other questions on it? And again, I know that on that last part in particular, there'll be a lot of people who have things that they want to say on it. All right, uh, we all can agree to disagree here. So anyway, um, ride safe and keep squeezing your lemon.